Well, time for a big change of pace and a very special guest, a superstar who needs no introduction. Close your eyes and let music set you free. Only then can you belong to me. Some of the th funniest things in television happen off air. Michael Crawford in his famous role as Phantom of the Opera and the man himself joins me live in the studio. Hello. Hi, Tracy. <laughs> Do you like your cushion back? No, no, no. <laughs> I was sitting on a cushion and just before we came back, yes, it was dragged from beneath me, so I'm now sitting down. <laughs> Tony, can you bring Michael's no, cushion I back? No, right? I don't need it. I don't need it. No, he's thrown it away. <laughs> okay. It's great to see you. It's lovely to be here. You are here to promote this CD, which is lovely. I was listening to it in the car coming into work this afternoon and all the great classics and of course that track from Phantom of the Opera is on it with other tracks from that. Is, is that your favourite role? I, I, I think I, it has to be shared along with, um, with Frank Spencer and some others. I, I, they're completely opposite ends of the earth but uh, it, it, it's wonderful to have the opportunity to play something and what big lips I've got there. <laughs> Um, and it is, it is a great opportunity to, to, to test your acting skills and then, and, and then learn to sing and be taught by a, a wonderful teacher and to develop and, and, have, and turn into a singing career, which I never, ever, ever dreamed I would have. How did Phantom change your life? I mean, it put you on the world stage too, didn't it? Because you were not, as you said, you were not an unknown, of course, but just not known for that. No, I, I, I mean, some mothers had sold... Uh, it, it was very big in England and it was very big in Canada and Australia, mm. enormous here for, for me, and uh, New Zealand. But it would, it, I never wanted it to go to America I, because I thought if ever I do go to America, I'm going to be in a box. I'm never going to be able to get out of that character. Mm. And uh, I, it wasn't really until I got the chance to, uh, to sing and then when I went over to America with Phantom and opened on Broadway, they hadn't the remotest idea that I'd ever played comedy, although I'd done Hello, Dolly! a hundred years ago, but I, I, I was still um, this romantic lead suddenly. Mm. So you can imagine what fun I had. Um, <laughs> it, 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 was, it, 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 it was extraordinary, the difference, to go somewhere where you've never been seen before and they keep saying, oh, my gosh, you're so romantic, Michael. And I'm going, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> and I, you, don't, you don't know your are It's playing. in the genes. You don't, yes, <laughs> yes, it's in your genes. Uh, I, I had no idea that, 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 that uh, you, you, you come over like that. You're playing a character and you're believing in this character. And if it's, it, it, it was a very um, sensual ca character for me. But again, you, you, you don't really, you shouldn't be aware of your own sensuality. Of the, but, but, so within a character, otherwise it looks ridiculous. You look, you, you know, hello, how are you? you know, it's, uh, it, it was a, a man, who, a passionate man who, who'd suffered. And, and so he was a dear, dear character to me. One of our viewers, Gabrielle, wondered what you think of Love Never Dies. I haven't seen Love Never Dies. I, Ooh, I think that's a statement itself, isn't it? <laughs> oh, no. Well, I, I really did love Phantom, and I, mm. I felt that it resolved itself in the end. It, that was the end of the story. Mm. And when I saw there was going to be a, a, a sequel, I thought I couldn't quite imagine him resurrecting himself as in, in the way that they had in mind. Yeah. You did mention Frank Spencer, and I think our viewers would shoot me if we didn't throw to, you know, a, a brief clip of Frank Spencer from Some Mothers Do Have. Okay. Let's do that. <laughs> it's all right, Betty. Everything's under control. Give me the case. Now take deep breaths, keep your legs together. <laughs> Oh dear. I loved him. I grew up watching him, and I think, pe and people are still growing up watching him. I don't think anybody has never heard—that's a double negative—has never heard of Frank Spencer. 
No, that was well, very flattering because I still, I mean, my <laughs> heroes were, were, I mean, what boy wouldn't want to do all these things? <laughs> So I, all my dreams came true because I was always getting into trouble for sort of roller skating and going under places I shouldn't go under. But to be hanging on the back of a bus and get paid for it, I mean, it was, it was, it was, I was quids in. It was great fun. Did you ever get hurt? No, no, I didn't. No, I, I actually touched what I didn't. I was, I was uh, fortunate enough to get away with. Uh, I think be because with you were all. young and bendy, perhaps. I was. I was very young and bendy, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> it helps to be bendy, I it think. It does indeed, <laughs> darling, yes. <laughs> Maybe that's for a current affair after dark. Yes, yes. I'll have this. my cushion back now, please. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have had a, a few requests from people for you to do, Frank. Do you ever do, Frank, anymore? No. <laughs> Is it because you can't get into the, the sort no. of moment? No, you do, but it, it's, it's usually... If, you, if you've got a child in front of you that, that that's, uh, puts you in a certain situation or they'll ask you a question, you go, you go, ooh, <laughs> no, you can do it. But, but it, it is hard. It does feel, it's a lot, it's 40 years ago. It, it is. It's 40 years in one month, yes. as a matter of fact. So it looks, it, if I try it now, it looks as I'm slightly demented and uh, I'm, I'm, it's not really. Do you watch modern day sitcoms? Yes, I do. I mean, I love, it's not as modern now, but um, Kim, Kath, Ki Kath and Kim. Oh, I mean, I, I think that was brilliant. I just love that. And I don't think there are enough comedies in that sense around now, in that style, in that manner. Gavin and Stacey from England, from the UK, I loved. But uh, a, the, a lot of it is just a little, it, it's a little too simplistic for me nowadays. I love the characters. I love characters in comedy. And uh, shows like that, every one of the family, every one of the cast was important. And every one, you could, you could, you knew them. You knew them. Somehow you knew them from somewhere. We have to take a commercial break. Will you stay and talk with us after the break? I'd love to, yes. Thank Great. You. We'll be back with more of Michael Crawford in just a moment. Stay with us. I'd use as athletic. <clears throat> well, my heart is about to burst. My head is about to pop. And now that I'm dancing, who cares if I ever stop? That's wonderful. Look, everybody! I, Cornelius Hackle Sport, I'm dancing! <laughs> You're next, Mr. Tucker. <gasps> Michael Crawford singing there with Barbara Streisand just a couple of years ago in Hello Dolly. Yes. Gosh. Do you, how many years ago was that? 40 years ago. OK, all right. Everything was 40 years right. ago. <laughs> and you can remember it all. That's the extraordinary thing. Yes. I remember those tight trousers. That's why I was singing so high. I've never <laughs> sung that high since. <laughs> Do you ever see Barbara Streisand these days? Uh, no, we made, we did. She was, she enjoyed working with me so much that 25 years later she asked to do a, a duet with me. So, <laughs> so she waited 25 years and then we recorded Music of the Night together, which was great. It was very exciting to do. She, she, she is on record as saying she's a, a notoriously nervous live performer now. What was she like then? Uh, she was, um, she was, she was very nervous. She was, but confident in in what she wanted and what she did. So she was. Bit, we were directed by the great Gene Kelly, and to me, well, that was one of the most influential well, and and momentous times of my life. I mean, he had more influence on my career and me as an actor than anyone else I've ever worked with, because he is exactly as you knew him, uh, as you saw him in the movies. He was exactly that kind of buoyant and energetic man and came into work and he'd come up on a Sunday and say, I got a great idea, kid, and we're gonna do this and try these four steps. Okay, I'm going home now. And <laughs> off he'd go and then Monday morning we'd put this in. He was like a child with his enthusiasm and, and it taught me a professionalism that has never left me. So I, I, I'm, I'm still in awe of that man. You've done other movies. Um, you, you made Condor Man, for Thank example. You. <laughs> oh, bring that cushion back. You know, you can, <laughs> oh, you can hit me over the head with it. 
I was watching it on YouTube this afternoon. It's great. It's corny, it's but fun. it's great. Yes. <laughs> you must have been offered other movies over the years, so particularly after you know the fan after Phantom put you on the map again in, in the US. Did you, have you ever been offered other movies? I have, but it's very difficult to put a stage character of that. He, he was a big character. He was mm. a big presence on a stage and and to then see oh yeah he'd be great in so and so unless it's laid out on the line for some sometimes the uh, Los Angeles uh, producers or directors they don't see it at all so I, I actually wasn't uh, inundated with offers at the end of uh, Phantom I, and I stayed working on the stage I love that I then started doing concert tours and that's what brought me back to to Australia happily and so I had a much better time and the nerve to start singing these songs live and telling silly stories and stuff that had happened to me that mostly sort of self-deprecating stuff that had happened through my career because it was that was the way it was we were talking about uh, classical music before, or at least the classics before, and we were talking about the CD that you're here to promote. Do you listen to, just in case people haven't seen it, it's out now, <laughs> Michael Crawford, The Story of My Life. Do, do you listen to sort of contemporary music? Do you, do you listen to Adele or Coldplay, for example? I love Adele, yeah. and I like Coldplay. I like uh, One Direction. The, the new boy band. I mean, the, it's good stuff because, again, they're just breaking out in America. There hasn't been a boy band that broke out in America in as big a way uh, since the Beatles. So, uh, and that was my time, you know, w w when, w when the Beatles were around and still you listen to them today and they're hard to beat. I mean, they're wonderful. It's, just just great music. It's true. It is. You know, y you are here to promote this album, but uh, can I tell you, it appears to have done quite well without you being here to promote it, because I have a little surprise for you, Michael. It, you've sold 35,000 albums in Australia, and that qualifies you for a gold record. Tony? Oh, my... Oh, my gosh, thank it's not you. A pillow, but... No, you're the one who took my pillow. <laughs> that's better than a pillow, isn't it? <laughs> oh, that's fabulous. Oh, thank you. Oh, my gosh. I, I didn't know that. Did you not? You no, had no I clue. Did, no, I didn't. I, no, they hadn't told me how many it had sold. I'm, I'm frightened to ask in case it has... A, it's like we're, we're doing a record signing at the ABC in, in Sydney next week and, uh, on, Wednesday, on Thursday. And I, I'm so nervous that no one's going to turn up. You, you, you do. Every artist, I think, is the same. After all these years, still. Oh yes, it's yes, we're 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 still notoriously insecure, Bob, yes, aren't you? Yes, of course, yes. And when someone steals your cushion in the middle of the show, <laughs> it makes you more insecure. Really, you deserve more respect than that. <laughs> it's been such a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much for taking the time to come and see us. It's been my pleasure. Thanks, Tracy, very much. Enjoy the rest of your stay and congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. The wonderful Michael Crawford.